this is something a little bit new on, on this channel. Um, I've wanted to do this for a while, and I'm excited to break down some film with uh, a friend. Um, today, or I guess tonight, I have Lucas Kaplan. Uh, he writes at Nets Daily, covers the Nets, uh, the Liberty, just an all-around good guy, extremely good at basketball. Um, Lucas, how's it going? It's like we're recording at 11.30 Pacific time, and he covers the, the Nets, so, so you can do that math. <laughs> yeah, man. I hope, I hope on the off chance that my father's watching this, I hope he didn't hear that, and he doesn't know how late I stay up. But shit, man, yeah, it's all good. Um, covering the Nets and Liberty, like you said, man. Liberty's a fun time. The Nets, not quite as much, but... You know, I maybe, enjoy the Liberty. Maybe, maybe we'll see. I don't really have like strong WNBA rooting interest, but I enjoy watching the Liberty a lot because Sabrina and Marine are unreal. Yeah, dude. I as far as I can tell, they're gonna shatter the NBA, WNBA, G League, any professional league that's existed in North America. And Ninety-eight like percent of NCAA teams. Uh, the assist ratio record. That's, like, that's it's crazy. It's like 70, 78% of their buckets are assisted, and like the next highest is uh, like 71% for some NBA team a few years ago. That's ridiculous. They are one of the most like fun basketball watches, period. Okay, so what are we doing today? Um, we're going to break down some Nick Claxton tape. Um, obviously, Lucas is a Nets guy. I thought it would be good to get a Nets guy. And Nick Claxton, someone who, I, who we both love, I can imagine. And um, mostly, I mean, we're going to talk about his offense and his defense. Mostly his defense, because I think that's like somehow still very underrated. Um, Lucas, what are your overall thoughts on Claxton? Um, how good is he? He's really good, man. Like, I, I, I agree with you in the sense that I do think he's underrated. I mean... Just like a quick snapshot, uh, defensive player of the year voting. I think he finished tenth or eleventh. Right, and he's as underrated as someone who gets deep boy votes can be. Like, yeah, but still eleventh, tenth. I, I think he was higher than that last season. I mean, considering he led the whole league in blocks, he feels, and everybody knows he can switch. Just on a very basic level, you put those two things together, it's surprising. I guess he doesn't have a bit more uh, hype. Yeah. Claxton is a super ridiculous defender. Was definitely or like had a pretty strong case as one of the like one of the best defenders in the entire league. As you said, Lucas, just the rim protection, the mobility, all of which we'll get into in more detail in just a second. Um, it's really, really, it's really, really sick. And then we'll talk some more about the offense, which will mostly be you because I don't have as much to say about it. But I'm excited to hear your thoughts and go through the clips and ask you pointed questions. So. Um, Lucas, you can see my screen? Yep. Awesome. So let's get into it. And the rim protection is obviously... Let's turn the volume down. The rim protection is obviously the thing that, like, pops out first on the stat sheet. And it's very obvious when you watch that his, like, ability to come from absolutely anywhere and block shots is ridiculous. And you're, and Lucas is, is seeing these, these clips for the first time. I mean, he's, like, watched all the games and has seen them live, mm. but... Um, as of now, he has he, he doesn't know which clips I picked, but the weak side rim protection seems like pretty unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. The um, I'd say the one thing he can he can go for some blocks that maybe take him out of rebounding position, but the thing that really stands out to me that I didn't really consider as a skill as much as I maybe should have for shot blockers before I watched him, but just. Like, the accuracy on where he's swiping for the ball, like, yeah. what he can get to. You Absolutely. won't see him whiff. I think this like, is, like, ever. this exact play, I, I swear we didn't script this, is, is a perfect example of exactly what you're talking about. Um, I think, first and foremost, it's, like, the coordination and, like, the mobility to be able to... He, like, jumps standing up and he finishes the play with his body on oh, the yeah. parallel. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But, yeah, just like you said, like, look at his left hand. Like, it... It's like it magnetizes to the ball. Like he knows exactly where the shot's gonna get off, and he can contest it beautifully. It's it's, it's it really is a ridiculous tool he has. That's so good. And uh, if you could you go back to that clip for a second? Yeah. Yeah. I think just something watching it, like when he takes this contact. I mean, obviously he's going vertical, but there's a little contact. He's so good on defense at kind of 
flowing with the contact and opening up his body to like kind of still be facing who's shooting the ball. You know, like you think about that as like an offensive skill, take a contact and kind of let it kind of push you into a more balanced position. But just the way he opens up like on that really allows him to, like you said, use that amazing uh, hand-eye coordination. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And I think that shows up in a lot of his stuff. Um, obviously we know about the switch ability. Um, I love this play particularly because he's able to like block Halliburton's reverse here, um, which is obviously designed to shield the ball and Claxton is able Mm -hmm. to like cover both sides of the rim, which is something that only the most like elite and ridiculous of rim protectors can do because that's just like a ridiculous amount of space that you have to jump. Um, I have a question to what extent would you think, or would you say that like the size, if at all, is a hindrance um, on defense for him? Just not being okay, like, legitimately would, center sized. I would say that it shows up. They're not a great offensive uh, defensive rebounding team, and I still try to parse. Okay, what part of that is the fact that they switch a lot, and you just you do end up with these guards on Porzingis or whoever down low, and that leads to offensive rebounds. A part of it is, like I said, sometimes he'll go for blocks that he maybe shouldn't. But I think it most shows up in he's not just a big body down there. Like, he's yeah. a better offensive rebounder than a defensive rebounder because he can just go for these balls. But when it comes to, like, you know, almost like a nose tackle, just, like, taking two guys out by boxing them out, like, he's not he's not doing that really, that is, I think. Yeah. I think that's an interesting point that I, that I didn't really think about, that – I mean, the fact that the Nets, like, often play with him as their lone big. And, you know, uh-huh. as you said, there are, are times where, in like, you know, against the best, like, face-up scorers, they can just shoot over him, like Porzingis or, yeah. or whoever. But I was, I, I don't know if this is what you're about to say, but, like, my conclusion from watching, I mean, watching Claxton over the season and going back for this is that, like, it doesn't really matter that much. Like, all things considered, um, I would call it a pretty... Like negligible thing in terms of his high end defensive impact because like he's pretty good at like taking contact and he's not like weak right like mm-hmm. I don't think I he's mean the, the, the crazy strong the example that Nets fans will use will is like oh well Embiid like gets him in a foul trouble a lot and is giving him problems but like you know he's Embiid and you could say that about anybody and he I forget who once said this line about Wemby and I. It was like someone we both know, but it was his body type gives people more problems than they give him. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't recognize that, but that's like very true. And I think that's absolutely true for Claxton, where the length is just so overwhelming. And he has the trait that all like skinnier bigs have, like Mobley, like earlier career, Anthony Davis, where they just are, they're so good at holding their ground when they take that Uh contact and like moving back with the contacts. And of course, Claxton is just ridiculously long, um, of course. Yeah. Even when he gives up position. Like, like. Exactly. Like, the last thing I'll say on that point is Nets fans should remember Jared Allen, who became a great, at least a very good defensive big. But oh, yeah. they'll remember in his early years, a big guard comes in the lane and, like, kind of go, goes a shoulder. A big guy elbows him on a box out. Like, Jared Allen was kind of flying all over the place. Claxton looks very skinny but you don't really see that happen a lot right and like unless it wasn't b which is like i don't know i i i can't really fault anyone for getting cooked by a b like he he kills jaron he kills miles turner notably mm-hmm. yeah. like whatever but um i agree with you I, I think speaking of just like his crazy like length and size this is probably my favorite play of the entire oh i i i, I know this <laughs> yeah um christian coloco is a very large person i i looked this up when I was putting together, his standing reach is 9'5". And he's like, so he's jumped off the floor and Claxton's feet are still on the ground and he's still able to block that shot with his like quickness and length. It is like the the, the high-end rim protection tools are so special. And yeah, it really and, is sorry, kind of ahead. impossible to do what he does as... I also love that he stares down Jordan Poole after, <laughs> after this block. Oh, that's the, that's the other thing. He is like he's a he's an asshole on the court, he, and it's great. And it's like you want your shot blockers to be like that. But the thing I think 
that really improved this year because you're like, okay, well, it's year four, and he was barely getting burned in, like, year one, year two. What changed? Because we're talking a lot about his athleticism, which was mostly always there. I mean, obviously, he got a, got a bit stronger. But stand out on pump fakes, and when on that Coloco play, a guard drives the lane, Claxton doesn't jump out of floater. Like, he stays down. Yes. This, he was, he's so much better at this now. Like, instead of jumping, trying to contest, and then he's left kind of exposed, mm-hmm. he stays down. And, um, yeah, it's kind of like a funny uh, – paradox isn't the right word, but the key to his shot protection, which is so vertical, has been he stays on the ground more often Right, now. as it is for so many, like, young rim protectors. And I think, my like, Claxton – is like the rare guy who can be like your primary rim protector, just like park you park him in the paint and you just say go block everything, while also being like a weak side help rim protector, which is a, like a position that's becoming so much more important nowadays. Where obviously we saw like the instincts and the movement skills and the the shot blocking as well, and the stare down of course for good measure. We can't forget that, but his ability to defend like from disadvantage positions is crazy. Like this is a bucket oh, against. Yeah. This is like Trey Young plus Clint Capella in a 2v1 at the rim. This is a bucket against like basically every other NBA defender. But like Claxton like guards the floater and the pass at once. Like there's he yeah. he checkmates them. There's nothing you can like do. Like it's pretty it's pretty ridiculous. No, that's so good. And the fact that Trey even has to consider passing from that position is crazy. But that is, again, like he always had, I think, the weak side stuff, like coming out of nowhere and timing the jump and getting a hand on it. But like the two on one stuff, the staying down on pump fakes, which I think would fall under what you called like more of an anchor big, like yeah. park him in the paint, let him go after shots. Yeah, this one was that. Really, this one was fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's Marcus Smart. Like that, that right there, if there was one play that's the defensive leap. From this past season, yeah, like that is how I would describe this it. This is this is Hall of Fame like footsteps. Like Marcus Smart has no desire to try and shoot this ball. He has like a wide open lane to the rim, and Marcus Smart is an extremely physical and strong dude. He, he's like, I'm not going to shoot over Nick Claxton. Like it's not going to happen. I'm I'm just not going to do yeah. it. <laughs> and obviously, ends up turning it over yeah. because Claxton, as we mentioned, the ability to stay down and read those plays is great. It seems like what do you make of his ability to like read the floor dynamically and just kind of like understand like what's happening. Cause it seems quite good as well. Honestly. It, it, I did and that again, we're talking to, I mean, I'm at least talking about improvements and that was another huge one this year. I think like as cliche it is, it's just like experience. Like he doesn't make that play against the Cavs a couple years ago, but you know, he's at the point where he's just, he, he just is so comfortable these days defending on NBA court. He knows like, Okay, I don't need to defend Jared Allen 20 feet out. What are they trying to do? You know, he sees mm-hmm. Cam Johnson playing on the high side, maybe out of the corner of his eye. And it's just, it's become, like, you know, natural. And I think early in his career, he, he the brain was always there, and he had to maybe think about it a bit more. But now, like, his instincts are, are much better, and that helps with the two-on-one stuff and all that. Um, right. You know, still maybe not the most impressive part of his game defensively but like you said it's really it's become like a genuine plus yeah and i think that was always kind of the hope even like i'm definitely not as familiar with his early game with the early career game as you are but i'm quite i definitely am familiar with what he was in college and there was basically none of this like floor reading stuff it was all just like raw athletic tools and movement skills which of course has blossomed and it's a lot of like kyp for claxton too i don't I don't think there was a heart like there was like a, a player who was like a bigger defensive carry like in the league more than Claxton, like in terms of how much he does for a defense individually and how much he covers for like mistakes and such. And he obviously knows that as we talked about, Brooklyn like went him so big. So he knows that his responsibility is to stop stuff like this. And he is so good at those like little plays and understanding as like you said, how to be an anchor big. And obviously I think the the, like the flashy stuff that's probably not as important as the other stuff we've talked about is like the switch ability, obviously, for mm-hmm. um, any like true center is pretty ridiculous. He has given basically every single player in the league problems. Um, we see Luca there yeah. struggle to to get to have his way with Claxton. Anthony Simons tries to mix him, doesn't really matter. 
what do you, what do you make of his switching game and like how good and how valuable it is for for the Nets? It's basically like a, it's a great you can run drop you can run which which is their other coverage that they'll do they don't really do a lot of like in between drop they'll rather run a, a fairly exaggerated drop drop or switch but it's just it really makes their life a lot easier because they can just toggle between the two with Claxton on the floor and. The crazy part about his year last year is that pre-deadline, KD's blocking two shots a game. And their whole defense is built around, no matter what, we have a pretty great weak side rim protector on the floor at all times. And before the deadline, I remember, they were second in the league in defensive field goal percentage at the rim. That only dropped to like third, fourth by the end of the year. So the last third of the year. Claxton was really keeping that defense uh, afloat because there's a bunch of new guys. They didn't really have the cohesiveness. But with the switchability, I see it once a game. As soon as a guy starts getting into what's that Simon's bag right there, like east-west, has he shot fake, it's it's over. Like, it's clipped. You yeah, gotta... His, his, like, hip mobility and, like, footwork is ridiculous. Oh, it, it's crazy. Uh, the guy who always had success against him early on was Dennis Schroeder. Because he's small, fast, and he just picked a foot to attack and went. Mm-hmm. And that was the way to attack Claxton in the past. But these guys like Luca and maybe Simons who aren't going to do that, I mean, he, he's just, like, overwhelming. Yeah. You think you have a shot, and then he extends that arm, and you just don't. He's a pretty ridiculous on-ball defender, all this considered. Like, I think he likes to use his hands quite a bit, and that can get him in trouble sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. but all like, like, again, all things considered, these are pretty like nitpicky weaknesses, I would say where, um, I think I have a clip of him playing drop here. Yeah. I mean, those same like active hands though, and mobility helps him be a really great drop defender. As you mentioned, um, it's the same kind of thing where he can just like play two guys at once always where mm-hmm. he's covering everything. Um, and he can get his hands on basically whatever happens. Um, as like a yeah. top defender, I think you just like started this year to see the tools transfer. Like, okay, great, great switch guy, so athletic, just locks in when he's guarding one on one and can move his feet and flip his hips. Why doesn't that translate as much to his drop defense? And then this past year, it had because all those things were there. Like this play, he does. Maybe he doesn't flip his hips totally, but he keeps them open and he keeps yeah, the active hands, which sure. is what exactly what pops about his switch defense yeah. or his ISO defense. Absolutely. Um, I think I, a lot of it really just is experience. Um, and the fact that he was kind of just like thrown into this role over the last couple of years. And he's done really well, obviously, this year. Um, probably maybe not like elite of elite drop big defenders, but I would say very good or you know f- near the top of the league overall. Um I think that was yeah. the last defensive. I'd say combining, yeah, combining that with elite switchability, because in and of itself, I agree with you. He's probably not elite drop, but it's more than good enough. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anything else you want to say about his defense before we talk about the offense? Not particularly. I mean, I I'm interested to see um, just this Nets team with a full training camp and kind of, you know, like I said, more cohesion. And they added Dennis Smith Jr. They added Lonnie Walker. Ben Simmons apparently is healthy and ready to go. It's just like they have the potential to have a much stronger perimeter defense and much better guard defenders and much better screen navigators than they did at the end of last season. So... It's not really even about him, but, like, I'm super intrigued by that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about offense next. So, overall, just what do you think of Claxton as an offensive player? What kind of role does he play? How good is he in that role? How much impact does he provide overall? You know, all that good stuff. Yeah, I basically just kind of want to talk about the notion that he's, you know, maybe some people understandably kind of picture him as this rim-rolling, lob-catching big. He led the league in field goal percentage last year. You know, like, he he catches lobs and dunks. But I really think there's some stuff there. If not hub stuff, at least just a pretty versatile role, man. Like, as you can see by these clips. Yeah, I think 
the idea of him being like a, a DHO keep kind of big is really valuable. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of the, like the most valuable complementary big skill at this point because there aren't a lot of like true stretch bigs or like ones that are actually good. But having the ability to like dribble a little bit to threaten, yeah, you know, like a dribble, especially you know with guys like Cam and Mikhail and DFS or whoever, and be able to like eat up space where a guy like Lopez is sacking or like Claxton has this little floater which he doesn't do here, but I think we have clips of later. Mm-hmm. That's a cool little running hook. I like that play a lot. What do you make of Claxton's yeah. overall like decision making as like a roller and as someone who like operating within like the mid to high post range? So that's what I. This clip is just like you know he's seven feet tall. Yeah, it's so Euro sick. step off so hand. Sick. Quick, like, quick. Yeah, this is this this is just like. Yeah, gravy. we gotta like, appreciate this. This is this is like the gravy here. Oh my god. Yeah, Claxton's awesome. I love the Euro there. The footwork there is fantastic, which, again, we yeah. see translating from from defense a little bit. Some of those Euro, the length, all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. I love this play. This play's awesome. I, oh, that's, oh, yeah, that's probably my favorite I absolutely one. love this play. Because, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> and there's a short roll pass later where he gets caught in the air and, like, doesn't know what to do and then just decides to throw it up and it goes in. And this is kind of like that where... He can he gets himself out of trouble He's, because yeah. when he like kind of just snaps into true instinct mode, he has these like great moments. Like I he is planning to pass that ball. That's not a planned, you know, fake and go. And yet when it gets cut off, he has the ability to just to pivot and yeah. do this. And that's just and you know, he's seven feet tall. Even if it's not like planned manipulation, like he's not like you know, moving Cole with his... Like, like, it works. Like, it doesn't matter if it's planned or not. Like, Cole Cole went and right. was able to react and capitalize. And, of course, we, we talked about the, the footwork, like, the stride length as a scorer. The touch seems to be really, really excellent. Um, I think mm-hmm. now we get into the, like, some of the short roll stuff here. What, what were you going to say yeah, us about so scoring or I, what? I, I bring up the manipulation because, honestly, the fact that that play wasn't is really impressive to me that he can you know, freestyle like that. Um, Yeah, the short roll stuff, I'm just kind of interested. I honestly wanted to ask you a couple of questions about this because, okay, like a play like this, this is a, if you, if you short roll often, you'll get kind of almost this exact read a few times in an NBA game. Yeah, this is an, super common. Yeah, I get a team that blitz. This is, this is, this is like what you get all the time. Some yeah, variation, this is like some variation of step up, weak side zone, and like this decision. So I actually think his short roll game kind of builds out from the touch, the fluidity, the finishing. I think if he can just make like these kinds of plays, maybe a little bit, you know, quicker, or, um, some manipulation. But I think just if he gets to an acceptable level here then he can become a, a, a good short roll guy because it, I feel like a lot of times you build it out from that feel. Like Warriors fans talking about Trace Jackson Davis, like, oh, he's going to manipulate the low guy and <laughs> make these two-on-one passes. <laughs> With Clax, I think it's the opposite. He's such a good kind of finisher around the rim. Just get him to an acceptable level. And I'm kind of curious what you think about that development. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you. I think scoring is really important for guys who play this role. Um, where, like, as we mentioned, like, this is a shot. Like, like Claxton can take a dribble or go straight up into a floater. Um, it was, you know, it was always, like, the classic, like, post-prime Draymond Green folly where he just, like, mm. they just back all the way up. But, yeah, I mean, it seems like Claxton's passing is, like, it's, like, fine. Like, he can make, like, the learned within offense reads. But I... I think that's pretty pretty apt when it's like these kind of shots where he's forcing defense to react because of course on you know plays I think this is just like a nice touch finish or good strength mm-hmm. but again plays where since he yeah. is a threat to score the defense has to collapse there's three in the paint and I mean this is again nothing crazy but he's made like he instantly swings the ball kicks the shooter. So yeah, I I do generally agree with that idea that it like does seem to build off of his fluidity and like driving game. I also love that drive too. 
but oh yeah I admit, yeah that one's great I think and this, then that's the play i, I kind was of gonna referenced say, earlier i think this is like the best example of that kind of yeah yeah where it seems like, like you don't he doesn't need he doesn't need to be the savant you know it's just because the instincts are so good and i love that he doesn't immediately pass this up on on that quickly kind of stunt i mean you know quickly maybe could have held it a bit longer but yeah. Too often, I feel like I'm watching NBA games and there's a short roll and the guy is so eager to get it out of his hands that he forgets he can, you know, take a dribble or pass fake and take right. a dribble. I mean, it's it's like the, the, the counter to the play like this where, like, he has, like, obviously Claxton's MO is, like, to kick quickly. But when mm-hmm. you get him in mm-hmm. the opportunity where he's, like, again, I don't know if you think he's reading here or if this is just, like, all pure instinct or if it's even possible to know, but... Again, like, this is, like, a, if we freeze frame where Clax obviously, like, I think, quickly, like, it, like, if we're, like, right before the ground, where Claxton passed kind of in midair on the other play, like, someone mm-hmm. without the, the either instinct or, or, you know, basketball IQ of Claxton might just kick immediately to Cam Thomas, but quickly's, um, quickly's already closing out hard. But, of course, Claxton here realizes, or whatever, that the, like, despite not looking like it, the lane's gonna be wide open, and... Even like the little look off yeah. here, like, yeah, I, like I I wonder if that like stops Randall from really jumping. I don't know if that actually made a difference, but the fact that he kind of like shaded towards kicking to the corner and it seemed to fall quickly for sure. Hmm. I I kind of wonder like that play specifically. Like you said, it's hard to tell sometimes, but right you without know, speaking okay. to them or like being like, what were you thinking in this moment? And and even then, they might not right. really have an answer for you because. <laughs> they probably won't. Um, but I, like I on that just, play, it's like, nice why play. does Clax a fake or or think about the pass, and why does he go up? Is it because he sees Randall isn't jumping? Is it because he sees quickly kind of rotating down at the corner? Is it because he realizes, hey, I can just put this up? Like, yeah. kind of, no matter what it is, my thing with him is he's talented enough, right? And it seems to, make to work, it work regardless. I think, again, yeah, you can see that I in mean, plays like yeah. this, where he just totally cooks Mitch Rob. I mean, I wanted to say, like, on a switch, but it's not a switch. But, like, it, it feels oh, like I, it. Right? I actually think, yeah, I think this year I hope I see them, like, one of these clips, he, he gets an N1 on Terrence Davis on, like, a straight-up ISO. I, like, I hope when he gets a guard like that this year, the Nets are more willing to be like, here, yeah. go. Yeah, do you think that he, like, can... Or, like, to what extent do you think he can be, like, that just, like, situational, like, ISO scorer? Or... Yeah, yeah. Sit, like, you know, he takes two dribbles from the top of the key in that Mitch Robinson clip. I think if you're asking him just to take one dribble on a face-up against a guard... Do you think there's, and, like, and anything a... in there in terms of, like, surprise creation development? You'd think maybe probably not at this point, but... I Probably mean, not, but at, at least a little because I mean, like, like you've watched his Georgia tape and and his Long Island Nets, his G League tape was. There were some. Would you agree that there were like some hints of potential? I mean, I know that was four years ago, but still. Yeah, I mean, I would say that was kind of always the thing with Claxton. He was just like a large guy who liked who like was pretty good at dribbling. There was always like the flexibility. Um, we see, like he he gets so much lower than Mitch. He's rounds his shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, I mean the off the like the the offhand finishes certainly weren't there four years ago. But yeah, yeah. I, I my feeling is like those those against guards. I think it is situational. But I think if you have an ideal scenario where he's 12, 14, 15 feet out, and he's against a guard, he's shifty enough and long enough not to power through them. But to give them just the slightest of fakes on a jab or a dribble or just a go and get to a finish that's high and uncontestable for for a guard. Like, here, I have I, I'm actually gonna quiz you on this. What do you think oh <laughs> for, for basketball <laughs> reference? What do you think he shot from three to ten feet last year? Oh, it's gotta be ridiculous. Um uh, I might have uh, oh. I might have set the expectations too high, but what do you think? Um I don't know, like 60, 62? Close, 53. Okay, so that's... I I was probably a little too overzealous there, but that is quite quite strong. 
It is, and it's it combined with eighty one percent at the rim. Right, right. And I knew that number was ridiculous. Like, yeah, I just think it's it's the that little those floaters kind of like finishes like this, which I'd imagine basketball reference counts as three to ten feet. Yeah, I would imagine like, so as well. I think it's just like outside the just, restricted area, basically. Right. Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. That's such a I mean, finish. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is so weird. <laughs> I know, but he has the... Uh, it's just so adaptable. And then, obviously, stuff like this is more fun, but you can see how this might translate to, you know, in an more ideal like world, half guys like Mikhail... Yeah, guys like Mikhail, Cam, Royce, uh, Cam Thomas as well, like, they could all benefit from a little boost in these DHOs and not being asked to create from a standstill. And if you have Claxton that is a threat to just take it and go and people have to respect that. I think it'll have right. maybe this, and it seems this like, snowball effect. It seemed like last year he like was it not a threat. Like I, I wouldn't call him like an incredible offensive player, but it seems like he like has genuine utility. Um like the play finishing is all is obviously super positive and mm-hmm. like the ancillary passing skills. Like I, I don't know. Like I I think he's like I would call him like a good offensive player. Like it's not like incredible or anything, but given the fact that he might be the best defender in the league, that doesn't really matter that much. Like Right, right. Like he's gonna be he, he's gonna be a good I mean the free throws, if you're just looking at it in the aggregate, like they need to get better for that value to really kind of plateau somewhere highly positive, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 he was a good offensive player, and I see a little bit of, like, he could become a genuinely valuable archetype that can rim roll and be a plus DHO guy because yeah. of this score. I mean, that's, like, the that's like gold in, in the modern NBA. Like, that's what, what you need. I, I mean, he's still only 24. So right. there are, right. you know, certain rookies that the Pacers may have drafted uh, that might not have been that clear, <laughs> who are 24 – um, when they come into the league. So there's, you know, there's obviously still room for Claxton to grow. Um, was always like a younger, I think maybe even later to basketball. I don't remember exactly. I might be making that up. But point being, um, Claxton is is fantastic overall. He is extremely cool, as we have seen in this video. Um, so I'll just say now, what are your expectations for Claxton heading into the next season um, in terms of, like, repeating what he did or improving or adding stuff? I mean, we've already talked about, like, the specific skills, but, like, mm-hmm. more broadly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of it is going to be team-dependent um, on how the Nets insulate him because, you know, I talked about this offensive potential, but like you said, he this is all kind of leading towards maybe becoming a very good offensive player instead of what he is now, which is a pretty good offensive player. And... Um, you know, it's a contract year, so it's going to be really fun to see kind of how much hype he has rolling towards the offseason. Um, but my expectations are, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the rim protection, at least the blocks, maybe decrease just a little bit. Um, you know, I think the Nets want to build perhaps uh, a defense that kind of keeps guys out of the paint with all these kind of long, potentially switchy defenders rather than one that for the first like 60 games of the year relied on, okay, guys are going to get to the paint, but you're going to erase everything in existence. So I think the raw numbers might go down, but I have a hard time believing that the defensive impact isn't, isn't going to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like that's going like away anytime soon. I think again, like people like you and me would probably argue, like he's probably not going to make an all-star team just cuz he's not going to score enough but mm-hmm. i think he was already probably like all-star top 30 level impacts last season with the defense alone i don't know if you'd agree with that um and like maybe this season it's maybe, not crazy yeah i mean maybe this yeah. i mean if you view him as one of like the two best defenders two or three best defenders in the league then i think i mean like obviously defense individually mm-hmm. is much less important than offense but I think he's got to be up there. And, again, I, I think Claxton is just, like, one of the most fun players in the league to watch. Um, I'm I'm definitely excited for this, like, this, like, full season, full off season Mikhail, Cam, Nets team. Um, I think they're probably going to be fun to watch. I liked watching them a lot before they 
before they did. Um, I hope Dariq plays a lot, or is at least, is at least healthy. Yeah, Dariq, what I've heard is, uh, you know, he's going to probably not be 100% by, like, the start of the year in terms of, like, can play hypothetically 20 minutes in an NBA game. Right. But I have this feeling that there, he's going to be in Long Island and, and playing big minutes, and I honestly really like that for him because uh, I'm I'm, I really like Dariq, too, and I hope that – you get to we get to like all star break or the second half of the year or something and Dariq is cracked the the big league rotation. Yeah, that would be really I could cool. totally see that happening too. Like he's just a very good player who's had an unfortunate injury shake. I mean that's like exactly what he did at Duke where he was coming off of like his his his, his like first lower body injury in high school and like he wasn't really playing at the end of the season and then like mid late season he was fucking awesome. Um and I could definitely mm-hmm. imagine him mm-hmm. being a guy who I mean G League reps are basically good for almost any rookie. Like, they're basically anyone could benefit from that unless you're, like, one of the top guys on one of the worst teams. Um, And I also really like Noah Clowney, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing, final word on Claxton. I could see where his success and the net success this year are very symmetrical. They need offense creation. I don't know how likely it is, but they lean into more of his kind of ball skills, and that helps both parties. And then he, they win more games, and he gets paid in the offseason. Yeah, season. it's going to be a lot of Claxton. I mean, certainly hoping for Mikhail to keep doing what he was doing towards the end of last season and, you know, within, like, the small playoff sample that we saw. So, yeah, that was, that was Nick Claxton. Um, let me know if you like this one. Lucas, uh, again, does basketball stuff at Nets Daily. Um, Liberty Nets. His Twitter is just his name with an underscore. I will link it below. Is there anything specific you want to like plug or mention that people should look out for? Uh, not much, other than you know, right now, a WNBA playoffs coming up and NBA preseason like training camp content starting. So I'm gonna be busy. And the Liberty, like we talked about, are super fun this year. So they're uh, insanely fun. Tap in, man, and I hope I hope we get to do more of these. If I watch. I like will like binge like marine highlights before I go play pickup. I'm like I'm gonna try that pass today. <laughs> Usually it doesn't work, but yeah, she's she's one on one. But yeah, um, go follow Lucas if you're not ready. Um, he does good stuff and he was very insightful on this as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice evening.